Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be deriving what is probably the easiest way to calculate the hydrostatic force on a complex object. And that method is known as the formula method. So what do I mean by a complex surface? Well, let's say that we're looking at the end of a trough in 3D and there's water filling this trough up to the brim. So our question here is, what is the resultant force due to the hydrostatic pressure? We said when we were talking about integration that the force on this surface is going to be the integral over the entire surface, so I'm just going to say integral over A, of the pressure. And the pressure variation for this is equal to gamma multiplied by y. So y here is going to be pointed downward, and I'm going to define x positive like so. Finding the value of the force is typically not enough. In addition, we usually want to find the moment about some point that this force creates. So the location of the force is also important. On top of just the value of the force, we're also looking for the location of what we call the center of pressure. And all this is saying is that if we replace the entire pressure pushing against this wall with this single force, it'll have the same moment and same force that the pressure would have. We need to come up with a equation for the moment about x and the moment about y. When I say about x, what I mean is about the x-axis. We're talking in 3D, so we care about the moment that is curving around the x-axis. This value is going to be the integral of the entire surface of the moment arm about the x-axis multiplied by the little differential force that's coming out. The moment arm about the x-axis is actually going to be y, and the differential force we're just calling df. The df here is just going to be the pressure multiplied by the differential area. So this is going to be the integral over the entire area multiplied by gamma y from the pressure multiplied by the y from the moment arm multiplied by dA. Now the moment about y is again going to be the integral over A. But now our moment arm, instead of being y, is going to be x. And we're still going to have the same df, but we have one more issue. If the force is pointing outward on the trough, and we're trying to use the right-hand rule, then this is going to curve around y in the wrong direction. So that means that we need a negative sign here too. This is going to be equal to the integral over the entire area with a negative, multiplied by this gamma y for the pressure, multiplied by x for the moment arm, and all that's going to be multiplied by dA. So let's try to simplify this as much as possible so that we can go back and try to recognize some values we might be able to plug in. This fr term, we can move this gamma outside of the integral, and we end up with gamma times the integral over our area times y dA. For the moment, about x, again, we take the gamma out, integrate over a y squared dA. And the moment, about y, is negative gamma integral over a multiplied by xy dA. Here's where the geometry comes in. The first thing we're going to do is define the centroid. So let's call the centroid here c, and c is going to be defined by the coordinates x bar, y bar. And this is just the center of the area of this little triangle that we've defined. So from geometry, x bar is going to be the integral of x over the entire area divided by the area. It's an average value of x. We write that by saying 1 divided by our area multiplied by the integral over the area of x times dA. And we can write y bar pretty much the same way. Now we can notice that this integral of y appears right over in our force equation, so we can rewrite this integral as y bar multiplied by a. The magnitude of the force is going to be equal to gamma multiplied by y bar multiplied by a. And for the force at least, we're done. So now let's go back to geometry and look at some other properties. 
The first we're going to look at is the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of an object is usually written as I. And then again, we're going to say what axis we're measuring this about. We're measuring this about the x axis. This is going to be equal to the integral over the entire area of y squared dA. So our moment can be rewritten as gamma multiplied by the moment of inertia about x. To simplify our moment about y, we need another term, and that's called the product of inertia. And that's equal to the integral over our area multiplied by xy dA. So our moment about y is equal to a negative gamma i x y. Now these values weren't made up just for hydrostatics. You'll see it in a lot of other disciplines as well, most notably in statics and dynamics. So we don't calculate the moment of inertia or product inertia. That's been done, and most of the time we will just have a table of values that we'll be able to plug in. A lot of times the arbitrary x-axis and y-axis that we chose doesn't match up with what the book has. In order to make this work out, we really want to measure the moment of inertia and product of inertia about the centroid instead. To do that, we use two theorems, the first of which is called the parallel axis theorem. It says that the moment of inertia about some axis x can be replaced by the moment of inertia about a different axis, x bar, because we want the centroid, plus the area that we're dealing with multiplied by the distance of the centroid from the x-axis squared. And we also have what we call the parallel plane theorem. And it says that the product of inertia can be written as the product of inertia about the origin defined by x bar and y bar, plus again the area multiplied by x bar, y bar. So now we're going to go back and rewrite our moments based on these equations. So the moment of x is gamma. I'm just going to plug in our equation for ix. And I can do the same thing for the moment about y using the value for ixy. Now that we have the moments in a way that we can calculate easily, how can we use them in order to find the location of this force? The moment about the x-axis caused by this equivalent force is going to be simply the force multiplied by the moment arm. This is going to be fr multiplied by this unknown y of the center of pressure. And we can do the same thing for my. This is going to be equal to our force multiplied by this unknown moment arm, xcp. And again, we're pushing in the wrong direction, so this is going to be a negative. So now we can solve for ycp, and it's all of this divided by our fr term. So all we're doing is taking our value that we calculated for the moment and dividing by our value that we calculated for the force. Now these gammas are going to cancel out, and if we split this into two separate terms, the a y bar squared divided by a y bar is going to be y bar. So that takes care of this part. And then what's left over is this i x bar divided by y bar a. So this is y c p. We'll do the same thing to find xcp. We're going to take our equation for my and divide by our equation for fr. And these negatives are going to end up canceling out, so I'm just going to leave them off. So once again, the gammas are going to cancel out, and the a and the y bar are going to cancel out in the second term. So we're going to end up with just the x bar left plus this i x bar y bar divided by y bar a. And this is our final answer for xcp. So if you have values for the centroid and for the moment and product of inertia about the centroid, you can determine both where the resultant force is and the magnitude of that force using these three equations.